If you made a profit, you'll get 10 out of 10. Do you think that's fair? Uh, that's like, we have to implement some part of the real life in the class, right? Often in the university, we just do the theory. So your theory might have been okay. Your strategy for trading might have been okay. But uh, you, you uh, didn't make any profit, right? Even though you used the right theory and the right strategy. But, so we're going to, you know, in the real life, you have to also make profit as well as using the right theory. Okay? So we can't forget that aim. So also, uh, I'm going to write down the direction. As you prepare the Word document, you have to write down what was your strategy. Okay? So just check again on the... I didn't put up yet, but I'm going to put up here on the FX trading and other documents which tells you about this kind of report, right? So just write down your strategy and print screen of your transact history. That's all you need to do. Okay? How can this be right this Huh? Your strategy, don't give me two pages. Your strategy is very simple, right? Yes. For example, uh, I thought that the Japanese government was doing QE. Okay? And uh, because Japan is doing the heavy QE and the US is going to raise the interest rate, I thought that the Japanese yen is going to get weaker and the US dollar is going to get stronger, right? That's okay, that's one strategy for the yen dollar, right? Or just you can explain about the trend. I watched the trend of the last three months. Over the last three months, the trend was that the dollar was getting stronger against the yen, okay? So I thought the trend will continue. Or you can talk about the historical price. Historically, the dollar is at a very weak level against the yen. You could use the, we used, there were some things like here in ad study, right? We had the RSI. RSI tells us like the relative strength of the currency compared to the history, right? So you say, I looked at the RSI and the, American dollar is very weak compared to the history, so I think the American dollar was getting stronger. Do you understand? Yes. So just explain, just briefly, just less one paragraph. Do you understand about your strategy? Yes. Maybe you did two or three different trades, just one line for each trade, explain your strategy. Why did you do that trade? Okay, well, you weren't just guessing. You were following the trend. What trend were you following? Weekly trend, monthly trend, yearly trend, right? Do you understand? Yes. Did you have any, was there any economic factor which made you make your decision or news? You followed the news, react to the news. Okay. So, just when I'm looking at your history, we can just quickly look at this document again, just to check. You can check before you send me uh, your history. Okay, uh, have you traded many times, including at least four separate days outside the class line? So when I look at your history, it will tell me the date, the date that you traded. Do you understand? Chris, yes? I don't have a uh, site account because of its operator, so I don't have uh, any data. So talk to me at the end of the class. Okay, number two, did you trade most of your money? So I can see, were you trading every time just $10,000 or were you trading $1 million? Okay? You should be trading $1 million, not $10,000. Did you use stop loss and take profit? The history also tells me if you use the stop loss or take profit, okay? Uh, did you have a strategy? Did you make profit? Okay, so these things I can see from your history, just number four, you just need to tell me. Write some short paragraph about the number four, okay? What was your strategy behind your trading? Are you taking pictures of this? It's on the website. Should we gave you this in week one. Okay. So I'll put another document just explaining again how to how to make the report. Okay, of the history. So uh, let's continue then with the country risk. Hmm? When is this due? When is this due? Uh, just it can be until two weeks later. Because you can wait until after your exam to send me if you want. 
after you finished all your exams. If you it's not the hard uh, the trading between mm -hmm. men, is it still counting? Uh, yes, but you know you've got to, you'll be busy with your exams, so it's better it should have done the trading already, right? But you can. It doesn't have to be just before the end, before I do the grading, right? So before I enter your grade. So you can wait, it's probably better to wait until the exams are finished, right? Now you have more urgent, important things to do. So wait until after you finish the exam, and then you can complete this one and send it to me by email, okay? Are you going to forget? Huh? What do you th think? If you, if you forget, should I try to find your email address? Search for your email address and send you an email? Oh. Or just to give you a lower grade? Lower grade. Hmm? Which should I do? Try to find your email address and send you an email and say, Oh, I have to remind you, you forgot to do the <laughs> on the trading for every student in different classes. Or just give a lower grade. Okay, so if you're confused about why you have a lower grade, maybe you can send me an email, right? Then you'll find <coughs> out you forgot to do the one that forgot to send me the information for a one though, okay? So make a note so that you don't forget, okay? Do you understand? Could we send the email and December 18th or 11th? The, uh, after your exams, before I enter the grade, so let's, when do your exams finish? What day do your exams finish? 14th. The 14th? Yes. So I can enter the grade maybe till the 21st or something like that. So send me by Friday the 18th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, did we decide in the last class that everybody is doing their presentation on Thursday? Thursday the 10th of December. Did you already decide which day you're doing your presentation? Yes. Thursday, everybody is on Thursday? Yes. Anybody on Tuesday? Tuesday. Some groups, most everybody was on Tuesday? Yes. Nobody on Thursday? Thursday. Me on Thursday. One, two groups on Thursday? Everybody else on Tuesday? Okay, then you know your own day? Yes. So then, uh, on Tuesday we'll have some. Then we have three or four presentations and a little bit of a review. And then today we'll finish the regular class. Okay. So we were talking about country risk in the last class. Okay. So we looked at the Economist, Economist Intelligence Unit. Uh, Euro Money is another company which uh, measures the country risk. So Euro Money has a little bit more easier to see information for people. Here we can see Euro Money country risk. So we can see a big map. You're, often these days, uh, for credit ratings, for anything, we can look at the world map and see the different colors, right? What do you think about those systems of grading countries? Grading countries for, for bribery, grading countries for financial risk, grading countries. Do you like that system? Do you like grading countries? Giving countries a grade? Giving countries a color? It's getting more popular these days to make a map like this with colors for different countries, depending on their risk. So uh, we can see this map. What, what do you think is the color red? What do you think green is? Same table. Very dark red. Higher risk, right? So, uh, here they have countries are moving, right? They give the score from 100, okay? This is the average in the world. The average score is 42 for the world, right? Cape Verde, Malawi, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, they're all under 42. So we can click on the country we need to register, sign in to get the exact information, right? So again, it's just another company which is uh, which it, which is providing this information. Of course, you have to pay to get the exact information, right? But here they give you the general general scoring for each country. 
So we can just see generally uh, which countries have got the higher risk, which countries are lower risk for investing in. So again, we have a list of articles about those things. Okay, analysis. Do you want to work for this kind of company? Do you want to work for Euro Money Country Risk? Hmm? Doing research about countries? No? Uh, then we have DRI. So Euro Money has nine variables, right? Uh, including, for example, Corruption Perceptions Index and other things, right? Uh, then we have the Bank, Bank of America World Information Service, and we have Business Intelligence Risk Intel, Business Environment Risk Intelligence. Uh, this one, right? So these companies are the main companies which are providing information about the uh, <coughs> different uh, country risks. <coughs> so here is. Uh, Business Environment Risk Intelligence Service. Okay, they say they are the leading country risk agency. So again, they have go to their website. We can see all of their uh, services, right? And you know Bank of America. We're not going to go to that website, but we also have Bank of America. Okay, World Information Service. So we have different areas where we can get information about the risk, the outlook for the country data of the politics and the economics of each country. So we already said that dealing with the risk, uh, we can just add on, we can get insurance, we can add on some extra, extra financial amount to the country depending on the risk, we need to make more profit, or we can choose to try and deal with the risk ourselves, right? Mainly dealing with the risk we talked about in the last class, invest in goodwill, make a good relationship with the government, right? Uh, try to find some pressure points and collect the data uh, to hedge the political risk. Okay, then the economic risk. Uh, we have to focus. The companies who are looking at the country risk will help to give us an idea about the economic risk. Economic risk, like the economy has some crisis, that kind of thing, right? So we can be use that data, and we can be prepared. Uh, we can see. Uh, the risk, so we can make a better decision about whether to invest in that country or not. Okay. Do you have any questions then about uh, country risk? So one group is going to look at setting up a plant in Philippines or Vietnam, right? So I'm sure they will also look at the country risk, take into account the country risk, political and economic risk, and that we can look at that. Uh, next week. Okay, so then let's move on to the last part of the, the course. So we're going to talk about valuation, valuation models for multinational companies and global investors. So we're going to look at the uh, Anglo-Saxon model of valuations. Anglo-Saxon, we mean, when we talk about Anglo-Saxon, what countries are we talking about? Yes? 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 Okay, so the countries which used to be part of the British Empire, basically, right? They, are, they have similar corporate governance, they also have similar system for finance financial valuations and so on. Okay. So valuation means how much is the company worth? Okay. What's the value of this company? What's the value of this project? So if you studied financial management, uh, you may be able to help me in this part, right? So Anglo-Saxon approach, we think that we have to maximize the market value of the firm. Do you understand market value of the firm? Market value means number of shares multiplied by share price. Number of shares multiplied by share price. Okay, that's the market value. What's the book value? What's the book value of a company? 
data set. Value of company when the accountants make assets. Why? Do you understand assets? The balance sheet. Assets, liabilities, and equity is on this side, right? You study the balance sheet. Okay? Liabilities plus equity equals assets. Okay? So either this side or this side. This is the book value of the company. Do you understand? Is this number equity equals to the number of shares multiplied by the share price? No, it's not, right? Why not? So we could have a young company. Right now they don't have much assets, right? But we think in the future they're going to make a big profit. Do you understand? Yes. So the market value is going to be different than the book value. Does everybody understand that? Yes. So in the annual Saxon we look at the maximizing the market value of the company. Okay? So I invest in Facebook. Right now Facebook doesn't have much assets. Okay? But I think in five years or ten years, Facebook will find some way to make money out of the advertisements. Right now it doesn't make much money out of the advertisements. Right? Do you understand? So I'm going to pay a higher share price. So we're, we're looking at the market value. It means what do people in the market think the value of the company is? Okay? What do investors think the value of the company is? So then they pay the share price and number of shares, and we can see the market value. So we also use the present value, capital budgeting, present value of their cash flows. So students who study financial management, can you explain what does present value mean? Present value of cash flows. What does that mean? What is the present value of cash flows? Who studied financial management? Hands up. I know some students who studied, they're not putting up their hands. <laughs> what, what are we talking about when we talk about the present value of a cash flow? What value of a future when you would be in the present? Yeah, so what the value of the future income, the future revenue we make, is going to be worth now, right? So year one, we make $100. Year two, $200. Okay? Year three, $500. Okay? So how do we change this to today's money? Hmm? What do we do to change this number to today's money? Use the interest rate. So what's the equation? Can you remember? 1 plus R is killed. 1 plus R to the power of, right? That's included in the equation. <coughs> what else? Where does this number go? On the top or the bottom? Is the number getting bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller, so where should the number go? Hmm? At the bottom or the top? Top. Top, right? So 100 over, let's say the interest rate is 10%, 1.1, 1 .1, right? What's that going to be equal to? Around 90. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. So $100 tomorrow is worth $90 today. $100 next year is worth $90 today. Why? Interest rate is 10%. Okay? Inflation is 10%. So the money is worth more in the future than today. So this is the way we use the present value way of the cash flow, right? And then we get the present value of this and this and add up. Okay? So one way we could value the company is look at how much profit is the company making this year? That's called earnings to price. How much profit is there did the company make this year? And how much does the share price cost, right? But Anglo-Saxon way is not just talking about this year, right? We're looking at the future revenues for the next 10 years. What do we expect the future revenue to be for 10 years? Discount back to today's uh, value, and then this can help us to figure out the value of the company, okay? So the, we consider the present value of the anticipated, do you understand anticipated? Yeah. Yes. Future income stream from a particular financial asset. So if we look at Facebook, we'll say how much 
revenue is Facebook going to make next year, after five years, after 10 years, okay? Then we'll bring those revenues back to today's value. That will give us an idea about the value of Facebook, how much Facebook's company is worth by looking at the anticipated future income stream. Do you understand anticipated future income stream? Okay. Can, is that accurate? Do you think that's accurate? Or just a guess? Just guess. Guess. We estimate. It's an estimate. Right? And based on our estimate, we then we can make out the, the values. So here we can see that this is the equation, right? It looks more complicated here, but basically we have the cash flow over 1 plus the interest rate, right? To the power of time here. Okay? Uh, so n is the number. They write here n because we do this for not just year one, for year two, year three, year four, right? So n is the number of periods that the cash flow will be received, maybe 10, 10 years, okay? K is the required rate of return by investors, the interest rate, right? Or the discount rate, cost of capital for companies. Cost of capital is going to be here, okay, cost of capital, right? So we already studied this in financial management. What is the before. E? Hmm? Estimated, estimated cash flow. Expected, expected cash flow, right? Any more question? No. So that's fine for our company, but then we have an international company. So we may get the cash flow in a foreign currency at the end of the time. Okay? Is that easier or more complicated? More complicated. What's complicating it? What's the complicating factor? We expect that we'll get our cash flows in foreign currencies. What can happen to foreign currencies? Exchange rate can change, right? So we have to stick in here multiplied by the expected exchange rate. Okay? So uh, the cash flow, this is just the cash flow part, is equal to the cash flow multiplied by. What do we expect the exchange rate to be at that time? Okay. So then we have to convert the foreign currency into US dollars, back into US dollars. Okay, does everybody understand that? Yes. So we have our cash flows, but it's not in dollars. It's in pounds and euros and other currencies. Okay? So here we have euro, 500. We're going to get euro 1,000. Okay? So we have to change it back to dollars. So we're going, how many, we're going to have to exchange, make an, also make an expected exchange rate here to change the money back. Okay. So what do you think from studying about forecasting exchange rates? What's the best way to forecast the future exchange rate of the other currency, especially in the longer term? <coughs> what? Interest rates, Interest rate, right? We talked about that's the way the banks use when they make the forward rate. They use the difference between the interest rates. Okay? So we already studied about making that kind of calculation. Okay? It's also based on inflation. Interest rate follows inflation, so it makes sense. If your country has high inflation, your currency will get weaker, right? So we, use, we can use that kind of way to make an expected exchange rate here. So. <coughs> Then we can make this, put the two equations together. This is the cash flow multiplied by the exchange rate over 1 plus the interest rate. Okay? So this is the value of the MNC. Look at our future cash flows in different currencies. Discount them to today's money. Tells us the value of the company. Okay? So the value can change because of changes in the foreign market conditions. Okay, we could have economic crisis in the foreign market. This could affect first our earnings, revenues could go down. Okay? And secondly, <coughs> cash flows. So we looked at this when we studied the case of AIFS, the US travel company. Okay? We looked, they were worried about their earnings could go down because there is some problem in the market. Okay? And also, they could have some negative impact from the cash flow. Okay? So this is the kind of risk that we learn to do, right? What should you do to deal with this kind of risk? 
what should you do to deal with this kind of risk? What did AIFS do to deal with this kind of risk? Forward contracts. All forward contracts? 100% forward contracts? No. So they need to choose the right hedging instruments, right? We need to make a hedging strategy. Do you understand? Yes. Make a hedging strategy of forwards, options, do nothing. Okay, depending on our possible loss of revenue, we have to think about our loss of revenue and also at the foreign cash flow. Okay? We talked about changes in the political environment and political risk. Okay? We just talked about it in the last class. Okay? We can try to manage the political risk. Okay? We could buy the insurance. Okay? We can add a higher discount rate, add a higher number here. Okay? When, so we're going to be making, we need to make a higher profit if we go to that country. Okay, changes in the MNC's cost of capital. Our cost of capital can change. Okay, the price of uh, lending money, the interest rate goes up, our cost of capital goes up. Okay, uh, <coughs> our stock investors want a higher return. Right, we're in risk off situation in the global economy. Stock investors want a higher return before they invest in our stocks. So our cost of capital can go up, okay? So uh, in this case, if we're a US company, a stronger foreign currency will increase our cash flow, just like the case of IFFS, okay? Weaker foreign currency will decrease our cash flow. So uh, this is the valuation model uh, for the foreign uh, company. So we, we can see what we talked about, the risk on the exchange rate, the risk on the cash flow, the risk on the revenues, Okay? And also the cost of capital can change. So these things can all change. Okay? That will affect the value of our company and affect today's stock price. Okay. Do you have any question about this model of valuation? Valuation model using the cash flow. Do you think that's okay to use the cash flow as a valuation model? Future cash flow? Is that okay for making the value for the company? Looking at the future revenue the company can make. Yes. See how much the company is worth. Right? If we're valuing AIFS, we look at what's their revenues going to be over the next what are their earnings going to be over the next ten years, right? Do we expect them to grow and get more earnings? Right? Then we put we make some cost of capital here for the company to make their earnings back to today's value. Okay? And then we give the company a value. The company is worth this much money. Okay. So, uh, if we go past 10 years, we looked at in the financial management class Disney, which is more than 10 years, for example. Disney has been here for 80 years, right? Or 90 years. So, in that case, we can make an equation. We just do the cash flows for 10 years, and then we make some equation just to calculate all the years after 10 years, right? just to make a number for that, that one, <coughs> let us know the value. <coughs> so, as I said, some people will value the company by looking at today's profit against the stock price, okay? But this model can be a bit more accurate using the future uh, cash flows because a company like Facebook today is not making a big profit, okay? But people think Facebook, like any company, once it has a monopoly, it's big enough, it's using billions of customers, then it can start to introduce more advertisements. It's going to be hard for people to change then, right? Do you understand? Yes. Right now, maybe people might still change to another company if Facebook makes too much advertising, that kind of thing, right? They're going to wait until they get more and more and more customers and try to find a way to bring in more advertising and get a higher profits, okay? But this profit is not focused profit. So yes. how to be calculate the that's a good question, right? That's the point, that's what markets do. There's a lot of intelligent people out there, and they try to figure out how, how much money Facebook will make in the future. Okay, and then based on that, they, des they decide how much they're willing to pay for a stock. So it can change, right? Especially a company like Facebook. Is, if you look at the stock price, when Facebook started off, it was $40 for one share. It went down to $20. Do you know the price today? $100. So it went from $20 to $100. So it's 
So five, 500% increase you would have made if you invested at $20, okay? So very, quite volatile. The reason it's volatile is it's quite hard to calculate the future revenue for Facebook, okay? Uh, com an ele electric company, it's easy to, telecom or electric company, it's easier to estimate their future <coughs> revenues and easier to say the value of the company today. Do you understand? Yes. Right, do you think Facebook is a valuable company? Or not valuable? Do you think they can make a lot of revenue in the future? No, you don't? You wouldn't pay for the shares? $100? They say over value. Hmm? Their company's value is not over. Mm -hmm. So, Mark Zuckerberg owns about half of the shares, and that's worth about $45 billion. $45 billion. But he said his daughter was born just two days ago. He said he's going to give 99% of that money to charity. Did you hear that? Yes. News? Right, so he, maybe uh, Facebook is a new company, so more corporate social responsibility, right? Even though he makes the profit, he says he's going to use the profit back into society. Right? So, uh, good question, right? I, risky IT company like that, maybe Facebook mightn't exist after five years. Something else could happen, right? It's hard to make evaluation. Company like chocolate company, right? Or a stable company like electric or telecom provide providers, we can more accurately estimate their cash flow in the future and more accurately estimate their value. Okay. What about companies uh, like the S&P 500 companies, right? We see that they're constantly getting more and more sales from overseas markets. So they're constantly dealing more and more with this kind of risk, country risk and exchange rate risk. Okay, Intel, 85% sales overseas markets. Okay, major market, chips and processors to Taiwan and China. McDonald's, 66%, uh, mainly from Europe and Asia, right? Do you think you can accurately, McDonald's can accurately estimate their revenues? Or not accurately estimate their cash flow? Not accurately. Not accurately? Why not? Hmm? So spread around the world. But McDonald's has been existing for a lot of years, right? Probably it has a trend that it's growing by this percent every year, the revenue. Okay? So maybe McDonald's will expect to continue to grow. Right? They still have a lot of areas they can grow in. So Intel, the computer business could change suddenly. People might not even use chips in five years, right? GE, Ford, car companies. They also Nike. <coughs> Amazon, Walmart, Starbucks. Okay, Walmart and Starbucks are more focused in the U.S. Uh, what about Japanese companies? Of course, the U.S. is a big country with 300 million people and a big market. Japan is also a big country, but small countries like Korea, Ireland, those co companies from Korea and Ireland, most of their sales is going to be from overseas markets and in foreign currencies. Okay, we can see Japan, 81%. Right? For Komatsu, Panan 80%, Richstone 74, the UK 81, Germany 81 for BMW. Okay? BMW mainly selling in the US and China. Okay? Uh, so for example, McDonald's revenues in pounds, euros, yen, in yuan. Okay, Nike, costs are exposed to the Chinese Renmin B. Okay, so we have a different situation for every company. BMW. Revenues is exposed to US dollars and UN, the Chinese RMB. Cost exposed to US dollars, right? So we can see that US dollar has been changing. This is one US dollar is equal to 100 of the main currencies in the world. So that number, one US dollar has gone from 100 to 80, means the US dollar has gotten weaker, okay? Against the main currencies like the yen and so on. But US dollar has gotten much stronger against all the world currencies, right? But we can see it's changing, right? Here's the US dollar and the euro, quite volatile, it's since it's come back down to here, okay? We saw this problem for AIFS. In this time, the US dollar went from 0.9 to 1.4, 50% change in two or three years, okay? Uh, the yen also uh, can be volatile against the dollar, okay? Yen, uh, since this time, has come back up to here, okay? So we can have some change in the, in the foreign exchange, okay? Does this have an impact on companies? 
Okay, this is the N. It goes from 83 to 76. That's 10% change just in, in uh, six months, right? In 2011. For every yen that's changing here, every one yen, Sony is losing 2 billion yen of its profits. Do you understand? Yes. Every one this goes up on the chart, Sony's profit down 2 billion yen. Okay? Because Sony gets a lot of its revenues from the US. Okay? So when it changes back to Japan, it's going to get less Japanese currency and less profit. Okay? Toyota is, one yen gain is even bigger, 30 billion yen loss for Toyota. Every one it goes in this direction. Okay? So it's, exchange rates can make a big impact on the profit. Okay? So we need to have the correct uh, hedging strategy. So we talked about already in the last class how to calculate the, we looked at the equation and we made the calculation, calculating the present value of bonds and stocks. On the top line we had the coupon payment and the value of the bond, and on the bottom line, one plus the interest rate. For stocks, on the top line, the difference in price from time one to time zero, plus the dividends, okay? Over one plus the interest rate. So the same here, just we have the future price of the stock or the bond, right? We can calculate the, the cash flow. Okay, with the bond yield is very different across the world, okay? And the equity return, they have also a big difference around the world. Okay? The exchange rate, we said, also affects the equity return. If we invest in funds or stocks, we need to do some hedging. If we want to only invest in the stock, if we want to invest in also gamble on the exchange rate, we don't need to do the, the hedging. Okay? So, uh, that's so then that brings us to the end of the course. We can just, this is just showing the difference between the equity market and the exchange rate, right? We already discussed before. So uh, then just the next week, we'll do some uh, presentations and some short review if we have the time of the course, okay? So let's finish there for today. If you have any extra question, then you can ask me about your project or about anything else, right?